Hi, uh, I'm Gareth from Tech for Africa. Um, I started Tech for Africa in 2007, and we did our first event in 2010, and now uh, we're on our sixth event, uh, which will be in October. And how did the idea for Tech for Africa come about? Good question. Uh, I was in a, at a conference called South by Southwest in Texas uh, back in 2006. Uh, it was Austin, uh, Sixth Street was amazing, and I just thought we've got to do this in South Africa. Um, you know, I'm from South Africa, uh, so that was where I started, um, and it was an obvious thing to try. And what did you discover when you set out to try and um, do the Southwest by Southwest? In, in it's a lot more expensive than I thought it would would be in the beginning. Uh, initially, the model was to try and bring out overseas speakers to South Africa, um, and it worked in the beginning, but it needs a lot of cash because speakers are expensive. Everybody thinks it's really cheap to get Elon Musk to come and talk at your event. Uh, in fact, it's not, and he's very busy. Um, so we had to kind of change the model slightly and move to a, a local speaker model, um, which is working much, much better, actually, and means that we have more relevant content, um, better content, and uh, it's, it's also more fun because you're not dealing with lots of expensive speakers. And you're also doing it not only in South Africa, but in the rest of the continent. So Correct. where did you go? Yeah. So last year we were in Cape Town, uh, Lagos, Nairobi. Um, next year we're looking to add uh, Cairo and Accra to that, as well as doing uh, Lagos and Nairobi. Um, so we're trying to grow into the rest of Africa, into cities which are, are logical kind of hotspots for tech. So what sort of people attend the event? Um, Pretty much anybody who's involved in tech, so we get we get CEOs come, we get techies, you know, developers, and, and everyone in between. Um, there's a lot of people who are involved in innovation, a lot of people who are entrepreneurs or in entrepreneurial kind of parts of their businesses. Um, but th there's a, a tech background to pretty much everybody in, in one way or another. Um, so unlike South by Southwest, which is music, film, and tech, we're kind of the tech element of that. Um, we're thinking about adding music and film but uh, that's a little, a little bit of waste. Tell me about the spirit of the conference, because we were talking earlier about how many events there are out there. And I yep. think Tech for Africa, by your description, has a, a very different feel to it. What is it that marks it out? I think, you know, personally, I find the kind of events that you go to where you know, there's a, a chairman on stage, there's a big panel of, of, of speakers um, sitting behind a desk, raised you know, above everybody else, and there's a microphone. Everybody's really formal, wearing a suit. I just don't enjoy those events because nobody really says what they think. They kind of say what they have to say. Um, I prefer events where I learn something that I didn't know yesterday, that I couldn't find on the internet, that, that isn't publicly known. And you do that by having an event where the speaker feels comfortable um, to say what they think and say what they're doing rather than you know say something which is prescribed to them. So what we do is we try and avoid sales pitches. We avoid overt sales messages. We avoid content which has a specific corporate agenda and we focus on content which is uh, real and speakers which are real and generally that emerges as a case study a success story um, uh, something which is imparting a little bit of wisdom um, and it's, it's stories which are real and that gives the the audience something to resonate with it gives them something to connect with but most importantly it shows the world and people that they're not alone in whatever they're doing there are other people like them and i think that means that the, the conference is something which is memorable um, and certainly, I've had that feedback from day one, so we, we've stayed true to that. And you're somebody who's sort of in the cockpit of what's happening, so tell me, what do you think the most interesting tech developments will be in five years' time? What do you think the continent's headed with these kinds of... So, that, that's a really interesting question, because uh, it's difficult to predict where it's going to be, but if I had to kind of put my own money down on things that I think are going to be significant. I think digital education in a country like Africa has to be huge or the potential has to be huge because you've potentially got a market which is massively untapped, which wants to be educated. Um, and you've got that $50 smartphone, which we were talking about, mm. about to become ubiquitous. So that's going to lay the foundation for digital education to be real. So I think that's massive. We talked a little bit about transactions. I think the people who figure out pan-border or pan-African transactions are going to be very successful um, because that's going to, again, lay a foundation for the next level of services. Um, I think e-commerce is going to be big as well, and, and I think it's going to be very different to e-commerce around the world. It's going to be digital. It's going to be, I want to reserve something or I want to get something, so click and collect, that kind of thing. Um, and it's also going to be delivery. So we're going to, I think we're going to see trucks arriving and villages going, all right, where are your deliveries? And everyone's going to come pick up their delivery. But it's going to, it's going to mean taking that 20-kilometer walk or that 50-kilometer walk 
to buy something out of the picture. And so it's kind of be Uber for e-commerce in some ways, if that makes sense. So kind mm. of e-commerce on demand. I think that will make a big difference because it will mean that people, instead of walking to, to a place, they can receive something, which means that they've got more time on their hands. Um, what else? Um, and then I think anything that's social and mobile um, across those languages we talked about, so Spanish, French, um, South African, uh, what was that one? Uh, Cantonese. I think those languages... Uh, Portuguese. Portuguese as well. Yeah, that was the other one, the fifth language. I think yeah. if, if people get those five languages right, adoption is going to increase. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, that's the big one. And then I think also just uh, travel. You know, tra mm. travel is a big thing in Africa. Um, I don't think that people in Africa get the, the marketing and the message of that right. When the internet becomes more ubiquitous and people can do self-serve as a model, I think that's going to become bigger too. But I, I don't know. I think transaction education for me are probably the biggest opportunities.